Okay, so what we're going to do today is just demonstrate to you how we're going to line up a simple shaft to a ball. And the way what we're going to do is use just a simple shaft alignment setup. First of all, we mount our M unit, our measuring unit, onto the riser rods which are attached to a sliding magnetic base. These four feet allow me to actually install it into the ball and it clips into position and we can slide it around. Now, on the other side, I'm using a shaft alignment mounting bracket, two riser rods, an offset bracket, and two longer riser rods in order to be able to set it up so that I can mount it on the shaft. I use a chain to attach in the normal manner. Now, I will use the easy turn program, but I want to start at the 3 o'clock position, so I'll move both heads there now. <clears throat> Just to point, the M unit in this instance is actually installed upside down. But they are both now actually pointing in the 3 o'clock position. Next, I will start my program. And for this, all I need is a simple horizontal shaft alignment. So, out of all the shaft alignment programs, I can choose this simple unit. It's just giving me a pump and motor, so in other words, a stationary, which will be the shaft, and a movable, which will be the bore. I'll accept that. Now it's asking me for the dimensions of the machine. So I need to measure from the center of the riser rod on each side. And I have 6.2, 6.2, enter. Now it's asked me to the center of the coupling and as we don't have a, a coupling I will just go with the default and accept the 3.1. The next measurement is the M unit riser rod to the front foot. In this instance it's going to be a negative because it's in front of the rod. So I can measure it, what I've already done, and I know that I have 0.5, but I have to put it in as a negative. Negative, 0.5, enter. And the last distance is the distance between the two feet of the movable machine which is six inches. Now I've entered it. <clears throat> now my bolt beams are on and I have made a mistake and put this at the three o'clock position but you can see I can easily move it around. Now I have coned these beams already which just simply means that I have pointed them in a straight direction. But I have to adjust the offset. You can see this beam is touching here and I have to move the detector backwards until it hits the center and tighten the detector up. Now I can remove my targets. Now as you can see I have two live time readings. What's important to me is I get the both inclinometers within a degree. So I'm moving the M unit so that I read almost 90 degrees and now I'm going to move the S unit 
again to 90 degrees. Now I can take my first reading. Now although I'm using easy turn, I'm going to try and take a full sweep, which means I'm actually going to come up to 12 o'clock with the S unit. And the inclinometer reads 0.4. Now I'll use the M unit, I'll slide the M unit around so that the inclinometer reads 0.6, 0.5, that's close enough, and I take my second measurement. Now I will take my third measurement. You can see the S mover unit moving on the screen. You can see that it's actually coming around on the inclinometer till it's just past 91, back a touch. Now I'll sweep my other unit around. You can see basically I've just got to have the M line sitting right on top of the S line. 86. Okay, I'm happy. Take my last re reading. Here's all the results. It's actually asking me in the vertical plane to add 15 thou to the front foot and 22 thou to the back foot. And it's asking me to move over 17 thou at the front and 14 thou at the back in the horizontal plane. I'm quickly going to make those corrections. Now as you can see, this is just an aluminum frame with two mock-ups or machines that we actually use for training purposes. So it's quite flexible, but it's more than enough to be able to show you how I can make the corrections. Now let's come back to the screen. As you can see, these arrows indicate that it's reading live time and it's got to come towards me. So I will start moving the front foot and we're down to nine, eight, seven, six. Now I'll just make the back catch up from too far. That's good. That's good. Now I will tighten down the unit. And we will now remeasure. I press remeasure. It asks me, do I want to remeasure the coupling? I say yes. start to take my unit over to the end sorry, sorry over to the uh, three o'clock position check my inclinometer eighty nine point nine is good. 90 is good and I'll take the first reading. I'll move to the 12 o'clock position with the S unit. And same with the M unit. It's important that I get the angles together. And you can actually see a little warning bar when I'm not. Last measurement coming up. You can see the little warning indicator there because they're far apart. 86. Last reading. 
as you can see that's very good I'm it's actually telling me I'm a thou and a half too too uh, too high the front foot and the thou in the back foot but the angle is actually almost perfect this is the coupling measurement a thou and a half two thou would be more than acceptable zero 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 now on a little training stand um, that's very flexible that's a great result you would have better results if you were using this on a heavier piece of equipment but that's it that's how you align from shaft to bore with a uh, shaft alignment system a dual beam shaft alignment system we can actually move the heads to the 12 o'clock position where they will go live and they've actually got a little bit better if we press this button there's lots of options to choose from but let's just go in and set a tolerance let's say this machine is running at 1725 rpm so that's in between 1000 and 2000 we'll accept that and as you can see it's all gone green so it's just good actually it's all very good but if we wanted to increase that we could come down to say 36 that's very 36 uh, thousand rpm that's very tight and we're still in tolerance so we've done a very good job